Today is Tuesday in the 33rd week of Ordinary Time. Our liturgical year is coming to an end, and in one week, our country celebrates the annual Thanksgiving holiday. Thanksgiving holidays could represent the joys of being with family or the pain and rejection of family. However, reflecting on gratitude wherever we find it, which is the meaning of Thanksgiving, can help us maintain our dignity during difficult family dinners. Now, I'm thinking of the approaching holiday because today we read a famous story from the Gospel of Luke about Jesus inviting himself to the home of Zacchaeus, where they will break bread. My reflection today is about invitations. The invitation of friendship and fellowship that God extends to us through Christ, and the invitations that we can and must extend to others. In our first reading from the book of Revelation, we hear these lines. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. In our gospel reading from Luke, in the story of Zacchaeus, Jesus invites himself into this man's life by saying, Today I must stay at your house. Reflecting on these two readings today, I'm reminded of a scene from the film Babette's Feast. In this 1987 film, based on a Danish short story, we find the protagonist, Babette, caught in the rain at night, persistently knocking on a door. The two sisters who live there could have refused or ignored the door knocking, but instead they open the door. They invite Babette to stay with them, and over time, she changes their lives. Babette is obviously the Christ figure in the story. We believe that Jesus is knocking on the door of our lives. Jesus is eager to encounter us. He's saying to us, today I must stay at your house, as he said to Zacchaeus. Furthermore, we are also like Zacchaeus in that we must choose to receive Christ with joy. What does this mean in practical steps? As a place to start, it means making time for prayer and discernment, having regular conversations with Jesus. God is inviting us into friendship. Therefore, as my second point, we can and we must extend an invitation of welcome to others. Zacchaeus is an outsider. As a tax collector, he's a rich man because he's a collaborator with the Roman oppressors. He's an outsider among both the Jewish people and the Romans. Today we might say that he doesn't have a community. This is the character Luke uses to illustrate something important about God. When Jesus affirms, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. First, if you find yourself someone without a community, it is you in particular who Christ is seeking. I'm thinking of those of us for whom age or ability has isolated us from others. Or the queer persons, like the bisexual or the non-binary, who don't fit neatly into the categories of gay or lesbian and therefore may be rejected by both gay and straight communities. Or the third culture kids, who feel like citizens everywhere and nowhere, those with many homes and no place that feels like home. It is you Christ is seeking for fellowship. In addition, I'd like to suggest that Christ's seeking can and must be manifested through the community of our church. We too are called to seek the lost. Ask yourself, who are the outsiders in our society today? More importantly for us at this moment, who are the outsiders in our parish? How do we measure and value people in the parish? Now, I have observed the association with elite institutions, professional titles, partisan political views, power, or more often proximity to power, 
make people very attractive here. Even though we know Jesus did not value people for these attributes. Our parish has outsiders, as well as potential parishioners who have come and gone feeling rejected. Some remain silent. Some are standing alone at coffee and donuts after mass. Others feel like Zacchaeus, climbing a tree because they are so eager to see and be seen, participate and be recognized by others in the parish. Rather than thinking about the rejections and challenges we may face during the upcoming holiday, we can use this Thanksgiving season to be grateful for the gift of faith and the grace we have received to open our lives to others. A few suggestions. Reach out to someone at Coffee and Donuts after Mass who you do not know who, or who is there alone. When I joined the parish six years ago, I spent nearly a year alone at Mass and at Coffee and Donuts before a choir member approached me and invited me to sing with them. That invitation, late as it may have been, made all the difference in my life and the sense of community at Holy Trinity. Look for someone with less power than you, a young adult getting their start in DC, people who did not grow up here but are making DC a home, people who do not fit into the usual affinity groups, and those who live across cultures and lifestyles. Not everyone is comfortable joining every group. Finally, look for those people up in the trees those who, like Zacchaeus, are eager to be seen, particularly the young people who show up and volunteer, who want to contribute and lead in the parish. Clergy are often criticized for an unwillingness to share power, but there is a kind of clericalism, that is elitism, among some lay leaders as well. If we focus our attention in this way, it is my hope that our parish can be more the body of Christ in the world, seeking what is lost.